Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo group. In the Affinity Designer and Photo group the other day Tim Steffi asked about whether it was possible to do an image where it looks like the corner of the image is curling over and I did a few practice runs and tried different things and I came up with this image of this cowboy here with the corner of the image curled over and I then used it on this background and added uh, like wanted dead or alive so I then said I would try and make a video to show you how I got to that so if I come back to Affinity Photo this was the end result which I saved as a PNG so I could have this corner blank so I could have whatever I wanted behind. Um, now it isn't perfect but by a long way I mean I'm not overly happy about the sort of roughness of this um, this edge here. It's sort of all pixelated and also it probably if, if this was done properly by someone who n knew more about what they're doing they might be able to add a sort of shadow within side the picture to show where this piece of paper w was curling over but I will show you how I got to this point and maybe somebody cleverer than me can adapt it to sort of smooth out these problems I'm not going to try it with a, the same image, I'm going to use a different image. Partly to show that this, because this one was done as a portrait image, which I think is a lot easier to do to get this curl right. Um, because sometimes you may have to do this two or three times to get it how you like it. I have found that on a landscape image it's slightly harder, so I'm going to try it on this one, which is just one I got from pixabay.com. So starting off the tutorial properly you open up the image or whatever it is you want to curl the edge on now you don't necessarily have to do this next bit but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that and I'm going to hide that bottom image just so I've got that as a reserve if things do go wrong so really I'm just using this duplicate layer so what I'm going to do next is add a new pixel layer, which is this icon down here. So just click on that and it will add a blank pixel layer. So coming over to the left hand side, we have these tools here. And the one we want is the gradient tool. Now you can use the keyboard shortcut, which you just press G, or you can click on that icon and it will open up some options in the context bar running along the top here and I'm going to change the type from none to linear now by default it will make a sort of grey to pretty much grey gradient it's not much of a change in this gradient um, or grey to white when I open this out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from this corner down to this corner and I will also come outside the image area so let me zoom, zoom out slightly so I'm going to draw right down to the corner over here and like I said I'm going to draw outside of the area we will be moving that in a minute and at the moment we're going from grey to white but I want this um, I want to change the grey to black so if I click in this area here click on the grey node click in the colour box and change that down to black now sometimes you may have it going white to black but if that's the case just click on the reverse gradient and it will swap that round 
So in the middle of this gradient we have this sort of line going across and you can just click and hold and drag this down pretty much to the corner so there's black virtually all the way across but I want the black to come even further than that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just double click somewhere close to this edge and it is this is where it's a bit hit and miss you may try this a couple of times before you find the position that suits your particular image so I'm going to try it there it will automatically sort of set this at a grey but I want this to be black as well so I'll just move that down to its black so it's pretty much solid black all the way from there to that point and then I can now bring this slider back up so it's quite close to this new black node so there's almost a solid or straight line between the two colors I've, I've just left a hint of the gradient there and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this click and move this node round so that there is an equal amount of white going across this corner here I found it's best if you have it sort of equal it's not always easy to get it just right but that's a bit better this is where landscape images are, are slightly tougher portrait ones I found it's easy just to go from corner to corner and it's pretty much right but landscape images you may have to just drag down the gradient line until you're happy that that is a fairly even triangle right once you're happy with that I'll press control and zero to bring the size back up to the best size for the viewing now the next tool you want to use is the mesh warp tool yours may be displaying the perspective tool but it is the mesh warp tool that you want so click on that it will then lose the gradient and it will put this white line around the image with a dot in each corner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this dot or node in towards the center a little bit about there and then for, you'll get four handles one from each corner and then two from this corner what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag these handles down behind the image and as you can see we're now starting to get that curl right, I need to zoom out a bit on this one just so you can tinker with and find a good position for these nodes you can you know you can still move this one around a bit and you can also move some of these as well to try and get a better looking curl it is a bit hit and miss I'm afraid well I, I find it is anyway yeah that's not too bad I've got the curl that I want and the important thing here is before you do anything else once you're happy with it is come up here and click on apply if you don't do that anything you do after this will ruin everything that you've done so far so click apply and I have accidentally missed a corner off up there um, let's see whether I can remedy that by painting 
that area in black just to bring that back yeah that's what that's okay so now we have this black area with the white curl there what I'm going to do is change the blending mode to screen and what screen will do anything that that was black on that layer will allow the image to show through and the area that is white won't so you have your curl so all we need to do now is to lose this corner here so if I come back down to this background layer if I add a layer mask to that and then I come to my paintbrush now this is a white layer mask so if I paint black onto this it will hide that corner so make sure that black is the brush color let me just raise this up a bit and you don't have to worry too much about going close to the edge because as it's a mask it shouldn't really be affecting the layer above and if it does you can always change to um, white and bring back anything that you may have taken off so really that is the end of that sort of look at how to curl that over but you may want to add some effects you press control and zero again to bring this back up to full view so if I highlight this top pixel layer and then click on the FX button now the first effects I will do you may like this you may not I personally think it helps but if I, if I click on outline and just put a slight outline so you get let me get my first tool you get a thin black line that will help define this edge of the curl just slightly maybe probably no more than one pixel I would say just to help define it a bit let's go up to one there we go one pixel it's just a very hint of a, the edge of that curl so the next thing I'm going to do is add some outer shadow I'll start by pushing these up quite high and then I'll bring them back down so you're getting this shadow along here so you just tone this down a bit it's sort of just trial and error to see what you personally like the look of I'm just gonna go with a slight hint of a shadow not too much but then I'm also going to add an inner shadow just so there's a sort of a hint of a shadow on the inside of this white area so again I'll just push these up so I can start to see the effect the only trouble with the inner shadow is it will also bring in a shadow around the inner edge here so you don't want to go so high that it shows up too much around the edge here but just enough to give you that slight hint of a let me drop the opacity down and then maybe So it's, it's, it's each individual thing will be depending on your personal taste and, and the image that you're now I've dropped the opacity down so much I can't see it oh, I'll leave it at that yeah, there is just a slight shadow on the inside so if I close that and if I zoom in Hopefully you can see that I've got a sort of shadow on the outside and a slight shadow on the inside 
and the black line. Now again, you've got this pixelated edge which isn't perfect. Um, it's probably something I've done something wrong along the way, but I don't know what that is. But so that is my best attempt at doing an image where the looks like the corner is curling over. So you could then save this now, um, and I would save this as a PNG file if you want to have this blank. Um, if you want to sort of keep this as a just as a layer to copy onto an, another background you could also come up to uh, document and flatten and it will flatten that down into one layer and then I can just copy that come to a, a different background and paste that on and as you can see it now looks like that wooden background is behind that particular image and the only problem there might be if if I reduce this in size it might be more noticeable that shadow it sort of just suddenly cuts off um, again that's another thing you may have to tinker with and find a way round because it doesn't look as natural um, but you might do better just to maybe do something like that and keep it looking like it's peeling off from the board behind so basically that is the end of the tutorial I'm sorry it's not as perfect as the Photoshop tutorial that I was trying to adapt from but it is the best that I can do so thank you for watching and goodbye